good morning students welcome to our biology class in the last class we learned about pollination shall we recall them what is pollination the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower is called as pollination okay next what are the two types of pollination yes self pollination and cross pollination list the advantages of self pollination ne self pollination is possible in certain bisexual flowers flowers do not depend on agents for pollination there is no wastage of pollen grains these are some advantages of self pollination next one list the disadvantages of cross pollination what are the disadvantages of cross pollination pollination may fail due to distance barrier more wastage of pollen grains it may introduce some unwanted characters flowers depend on the agents for pollination these are some of the disadvantages of cross pollination okay good today we are going to learn about agencies of cross pollination students what are the agents of cross pollination you already studied that insects like honey bee wasp birds bats wind and water are some of the agents of cross pollination that is cross pollinated flowers depend on the external agencies for pollination you know that isn't it now we are going to learn some of some of the agents for pollination and the adaptation of that cross pollinated flowers cross pollination is always depend on another agent to cause the transfer of pollen the agents of pollination include birds animals water wind and insects in order to bring about cross pollination it is necessary that the pollen should be carried from one flower to another of a different plant this takes place through the agency of animals insects wind and water first one pollination by wind students listen carefully pollination by wind is also known as anemophily the the pollination with the help of wind is called anemophily anemo means wind philus means affinity or liking so the pollination with the help of wind is called anemophily the anemophilous flowers have some adaptations to pollinate through wind stigmas are comparatively large protruding and sometimes hairy to trap the pollen grains stigmas are the female reproductive part of a flower you know that isn't it protruding means projecting outside so stigmas are comparatively large protruding and sometimes hairy to trap the pollen grains or to catch the pollen grains then only pollination occur and it is followed by fertilization example for this anemophilous flowers are grasses and some cacti what is anemophily pollination with the help of wind is called anemophily what are the adaptations or characters of anemophilous flowers anemophilous flowers produce enormous amount of pollen grains the pollen grains are small smooth dry and lightweight stigmas are comparatively large protruding and sometimes hairy to trap the pollen grains example grasses and some cacti pollen of such plants are blown off at a distance of more than 1000 km these are the characters of anemophilous flowers next pollination by insects pollination with the help of insects like honey bees 
flies are called entomophily to attract insects these flowers are brightly colored have sweet smell and nectar that is the insect pollinated flowers have brightly colored petals sweet smell and nectar to attract the insects the pollen grains are larger in size the egg sign is pitted spiny etc what is egg sign we already studied the outer layer of pollen grain is known as egg sign the egg sign is pitted and spiny so they can be stuck firmly on the sticky stigma for fertilization and also the back of the pollinators that is insects approximately 80% of the pollination is done by the insects is carried by honey bees so what is entomophily pollination with the help of insects like honey bees flies are called entomophily what are the characters of entomophilous flowers these flowers are brightly colored and have sweet smell and nectar to attract the insects the pollen grains are larger in size egg sign is pitted and spiny so they can be stuck firmly on the sticky stigma approximately 80% of the po- pollination is done by the insects is carried by honey bees next pollination by water the pollination with the help of water is called hydrophily hydro means water this takes place in aquatic plants these hydrophilous plants have some adaptation here the pollen grains are produced in large numbers because there are an more wastage of pollen grains in water so pollen grains are produced in large numbers pollen grains float on surface of water till they land on the stigma of female flowers example hydrilla and valisneria you can see the picture the pollen grains float on surface of water till they land on the stigma of female flowers example hydrilla and valisneria these are the adaptation of hydrophilus flowers next agent for pollination is animals when pollination takes place with the help of animals it is called zoophily zoophily is a form of pollination where by pollination is transferred by animals while feeding the animals accidentally rub against the stamens and get pollen stuck all over themselves when they move to another flower to feed some of the pollen can rub off onto this new plant stigma thus pollination takes place by animals these flowers also have some adaptations flowers of such plants attract animals by their bright color size scent etc example squirrels pollinate flowers of silk cotton tree now let us watch the video about the agents of cross pollination then you can clearly understand about the agents of pollination agents of pollination The most common agents of pollination are wind, water, insects, mammals and birds. Wind. Wind blows away pollen grains from the anthers of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Such flowers are small, not brightly colored, do not produce nectar, have very light pollen grains so that they can easily be blown away with the wind. Anthers are large and loosely attached. stigmas hang out of the flower to trap the pollen grains some examples are wheat rice maize and rye grass water pollination in aquatic plants is usually carried out by water 
water pollinated flowers release their pollen grains into the water and are passively carried to other flowers by water currents example sea grass insects many insects visit flowers for nectar during the process some pollen stick to the body parts of these insects then when this insect visits another flower the pollen grains are brushed off some of which fall on the stigma insect pollinated flowers usually have a sweet smell and bright colors nectarines that produce nectar sticky stigma and pollen grains examples are buttercup sweet pea orchids hernia etc by butterflies and moths asclepias grindelia Linanthus dichotomus by flies and mosquitoes leptosiphon by bees and wasps cholerae flowers visited by nocturnal insects have less showy petals but are often strongly scented mammals some flowers are pollinated by small mammals such as bats and rodents mammal pollinated flowers have the following characteristics They often have a strong scent. Example: those that attract mice have a yeasty odor. They are often brown or white in color. They are quite sturdy in order to bear the vigorous activity of small mammals while they feed on the nectar these flowers provide. Example: cobia. Birds. Bird pollinated flowers are much more common than mammal pollinated flowers. Two large groups of birds which pollinate flowers are the sun birds of africa and asia and the humming birds of the americas both groups of birds have long beaks that allow them to reach inside the petal tubes of flowers humming birds are well known for their ability to hover in front of the flowers while drinking the nectar sun birds however sit on the flower stalk and collect the nectar bird pollinated flowers have the following characteristics they often have red orange or yellow petals or sepals or stamens that are attractive to birds they are not usually scented because most birds do not have a well developed sense of smell example fakiria polymonium students these are the agents of cross pollination what are they wind insects water and animals students hope you can understand about the agents of cross pollination learn well and do the homework okay thank you students